and welcome to clickcentral.com. Um, today I'm going to talk about the where exist um, function and also a little bit of a, a problem that you may find that you, you have with it, uh, especially when you use it for incremental loads, which is where I often use um, where exists and where not exists. So this goes through a very simple data source. It's going to load two tables and the second one will have a where exists function on there. So we're loading A, B, C, D, E. Um, on the first one as the IDs and the second one's F, G and A again which is important. So what we're going to do is when we load first we've got all those IDs in there the second one looks at what we've currently got loaded and see if the if the condition is met. So in the way exists it's very straightforward um, we've got these IDs in here so we're only going to load from this second table where ID already exists and the value already exists. And actually in this example, the only time it does exist is A, because A exists in there, but none of the others do, as far as F, G do not exist in this original table. So when we re reload this, uh, what we're expecting to see is all these values, and then these additional values as well concatenated onto that um, same table with um, some of the higher values for A, North and East. Um, Okay, so we'll just reload that. Eight lines fetched, which looks good. An additional two lines. And we just go on to the data. And we can see that, yes, we've got the original two A's, the lower values, and we've got the two IAA's, 600 and 700, which is all quite fine and dandy. The nice thing about where exists as well, um, if you wasn't aware that this is, it makes it optimised um, when you're loading from a QBD where where A equals B or something like that, that's not optimised. So we'll just go back to the script. Now, logically, if we were to type in not here, we'd expect to see the reverse. So we'd still expect to see all these values here, um, but then what we'd expect to see is the reverse of what we had before. We had the two A's, we don't expect to see the opposite, the F's and the G's. However, this is where the problem comes in, which sometimes people are not fully aware of. When I reload it, we'll see again we've got eight lines, which is odd because we're expecting a lot more lines than two in the, the second load script. So we'll look on this again. And now, We've got the, the lower values, A, B, C, D, E, which is the first table. But now we've only got one F and one G, uh, 100 and 300, which is if we look back onto the load, which is the 100 and the 300. So what it's done, it re-evaluates the ID on every line, which is something, again, you need to be aware of. So it's loaded this line in, and it's got an ID of F. So now he looks here, and it says where not exists ID, we already has an F. So at this point, it says, no, the condition isn't met. We already have the F ID, so therefore we will not load this line. Similarly with G, we've been less line in here because it doesn't exist. Now it does, it doesn't load these two lines. And similarly with A, we already in the top table, so we don't load it again. So this is a, an issue with where not exists. You expect it to be the opposite of where it exists, but it isn't. Um, so really when you're using where not exists, you want to be looking at something that's a bit more unique. So it may be a, a combination of, of ID and dimension, for example, if that makes it um, that composite key a, a distinct key. Um, but it's just worth thinking about because otherwise you may potentially be losing rows um, that you don't want to be losing and on this example it's very easy to spot on some of the bigger exam you know bigger working models it may not be very obvious that that's what's happening anyway thanks for watching um love to hear your comments and um yep see you soon